Are you enjoying your holiday weekend? Well, you will be after this, because the Rizzo Show starts right now. Whee! MGM Northfield Park presents The Rizzo Show. And now, your host, Tony Rizzo. That's right, look at this, look at this. Look at this, where are we, Vegas? The new Rizzo Show set, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to the show. Look who I've got with me. The Browns are starting, I've got ESPN Cleveland's Tony Grossi. Tone, the preseason is over, thank you God. How wonderful is it to finally be I mean, this week, we're going to have Browns football. After anticipating it for so long, it was the longest preseason ever. It, it really was. like six games. Tony, it feels like we've been waiting for the preseason, or actually the offseason to be over, since Baker threw that interception in Baltimore, right? Right. And then it cranked up after the trade for uh, Odell Beckham in March. But now it's here. Well, Tony, we are a week away from the regular season, and we are going to talk about some of the biggest question marks facing the Browns. And let's start with, I think, what everybody mentions when they talk about nationally the Browns. First-year head coach Freddie Kitchens. Tony, do you feel Freddie is ready uh, for the regular ready, season? Ready, Freddie. Here he comes. I do. I, th I thought it was a, f a flawless uh, training camp and preseason he had. Uh, his team responded to the toughness that he, he tried to show. In, he put them through in training camp. You didn't hear grumbling. You didn't see guys dragging their heads. They were energized every day, even though they were tested. And I think he came out of that week in Indianapolis, or that couple days in Indianapolis, really feeling proud that he had the team exactly where he wanted it to be at that point. And Tony, what exactly, uh, exactly happened in Indianapolis? Why did he th think that that was the highlight of the preseason? Well, it was, uh, it was their first road you know, assignment with, this, with his new team. Uh, there were a couple tough practices there against uh, the Colts. Uh, he instigated fights. He, he wanted his team to come out that second day with an edge, and, and they pulled it off. Uh, they pushed the Colts around. They didn't get hurt. Mm. There were no major injuries. And after the practices, they seemed to all bond together. Like when you used to go to training camp in a remote little uh, location sure. for that purpose, they, they squeezed all their bondness, it seemed, in, in Indianapolis. Well, there's a big debate going on, T, right now. Which side of the ball is better for the Browns? Will it be their offense, vaunted offense? But what we've seen in the preseason, Tony, it might very well be the defense, right? Well, it certainly was the defense in uh, preseason because they were together more often than the offense. But when you look at individually, Riz, there are more potential stars on offense. We just haven't seen them all play together. Odell, Baker Mayfield... Uh, Landry, Joku, Nick Chubb. Uh, I think potentially that can be a very explosive offense, top five point scores, and that's what football is all about right now. Right. So uh, I know the evidence says defense right now, and, and I'm not trying to cut them short, but I, I think the offense is going to be pretty lethal. Tom, we saw the Browns pass the heck out of the ball in the preseason. We only saw Nick Chubb for just a bit. Uh, Kareem Hunt now is going to be out with some hernia, uh, hernia surgery that he's going to have. Do you think Chubb is ready to carry the load? Well, I, th I think Chubb uh, is, you know, if you play fantasy football, this is the Cleveland Brown to take first, I think. Uh, I think Nick Chubb is primed for a big, big year. He should have had 1,000 yards. He was at virtually 1,000 yards last year. It didn't even really start until the second half of the season. I think this coaching staff loves him. They're committed to him, even though it's going to be a high-scoring offense and you think throwing the ball all over the place. I think Chubb is going to be really the secret weapon of this team. Um, what about Kareem Hunt, Tone? Is the team counting on him or, you know, the league said that he's not allowed. I don't know what's going to happen now that he has an injury, but the yeah. league said he wasn't allowed to be in the facility for eight weeks. And, you know, did, there's a guy that's walking a fine line. Well, it's time to do the time, really, for, for uh, the, the suspension. Uh, everyone knew, uh, the Browns knew this was coming. Eight, eight games, uh, it's really nine weeks because their bye week is, is within that first eight weeks. Uh, the, the whole mystery is, can, can he behave while he's away from uh, the uh, structure of the organization? You know, when training camp, now, when minicamp let out, you had that little brief period of about five weeks vacation. Right. That's when he had kind of a little altercation uh, off the field that he wasn't disciplined for, but it was a red flag. So now, here we go. This is going to be longer. This is eight weeks. He's got to stay straight and narrow. 
The only thing we didn't get to see, Tom, in training camp is Baker throw to Odell Beckham Jr. in a game. Yeah. Uh, how do you think it'll go for OBJ? The Browns got him to the opener healthy, and that was their big goal, right? It was, and, and he is he's really chomping at the bit to get out there. I mean, it's been the Browns' plan to really keep him in bubble wrap, and, and, and now he's ready to go. Uh, he's got two weeks to acclimate, nah, 10 days to acclimate, now a week to acclimate himself with a with number one offense. Uh, whereas the few times they were out there together right. in, in team practices, it looked like they've been teammates for a while. Right. So I don't have that concern. Uh, I, th I think he's, he's almost like a secret weapon. Everyone, everyone in the league knows what Odell Beckham's capable of, but what Baker thrown to him is a lot different than Eli Manning for the last five years. And you feel like because they're veterans that they'll come around and they really didn't need the game time, but it will take a while for them to hook up. We'll, I mean, I don't know if they, if they, if he doesn't have 18 catches and, and 140 yards in the, in the opener, I'm no. not going to be disappointed. Right? No, no. On top of that, I mean, there's all these other weapons with uh, Landry and Joku, Rashard Higgins, you know, they're going to throw to Chubb. So, uh, but Beckham, one thing we noticed in practice inside the 20 when they get in the red zone yeah he's uncoverable yeah uh, he finds those little slots yeah. where, where yeah and then Baker throws him the ball so I, th I think it's gonna be yeah. a pretty good combination Tony I can't wait <laughs> another question mark and it's a big one will Browns fans uh, be able to rely on the special teams don't what do you think Austin Seibert it was one of the best turnarounds we've seen in a long time he went with the last two games and looked like the kicker the Browns took in the fifth round. Comeback player of training camp. There we go. Started out very shaky and came on strong, made his last six field goals, made all his PATs. And I think by the end of the preseason schedule, uh, th there was a confidence finally in him among his teammates. Uh, he admitted, Seibert did, that uh, there wasn't a lot of trust in him the first couple weeks right. when he was just practicing and missing field goals. Uh, he, he, he played through it, and that's, Kitchens loves that in a player when you're down and you pick yourself up and you recover, and, and that's kind of what he did. It was a very, he's one of the big winners of this preseason for the Browns. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm hoping, though, the coverage team and, you know, the returners and everybody, I mean, Tone, special teams are a big part of professional football. We haven't had them here for, you know, since Josh Cribbs left. <laughs> we really. saw how harmful they could be they were if the they're un, bad. The unspecial teams, right. we call them. And that's one thing, though, is you can't simulate this in practice. Right. They don't go high-speed punt coverage or kickoff coverage. So we'll all find out, including the coaches, uh, during the games. But it's been a big upgrade. There's so much more attention devoted to it at practice. And, and if they have a solid kicker, just think what a solid kicker would have done last year. We would, we would have been in the playoffs. Right. Lastly, Tony, the million-dollar question. And I love positive Tony. Folks, we've got positive <laughs> Tony in studio tonight. Can the Browns handle the hype? I had Mike Florio from Pro Football Talk on uh, a couple days ago on my radio show. And he said that the Browns are now a measuring stick game for everybody in the NFL and that that's a tough place. You hear the old bulls on the back. Teams will measure themselves against the Browns. They're going to get everybody's best game to them. Sure. And they say, bring it on. And you know what? That's the same phrase that Baker Mayfield used when all the pieces of the, those firings were on the ground and he had to pick them up last year. Everything fell on him. He said, bring it on. And what happened? They won five of their last seven games. SI, I, cover of SI. Uh, that, that brings back bad memories of, <laughs> of, of, of former Browns, t uh, Cleveland teams being touted on that magazine. And they are, you, to, are you talking about Joe Carter and Corey Snyder? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I just think, you know, again, the quarterback is so strong mentally. Yeah. Uh, the, these expectations and this buzz is not going to crush them. Yeah, so I, that's my basis of confidence that they're not going to fall victim like the 2008 Browns, right. who was far less talented, but, but uh, a lot of buzz about. Coming off a 10-win yeah. season. So, Tony, do you feel better about the Browns or worse now that the preseason's over? I feel good. I feel, I feel uh, as good as I expected. Uh, there, was, there was no major setbacks in my mind. There were minor things that they plowed through. You know, uh, the kicker, we, we brought that up already. Sure. Uh, uh, so I, I think there is as good a frame of mind mentally and certainly physically as you, any Browns team I can think of heading into an opener. Well, will we see a Sports Illustrated cover with the Browns as Super mm -hmm. Bowl champs? We'll have to wait and see. Coming up, don't go anywhere. Tony, we're going to spin the wheel on the Rizzo Show. Our new set, the Browns, the Indians. We're ready, baby. Stay with us.
Hey now, hey now, look at this, man. You, Welcome back. Folks, we have spun the wheel in the past, but there is nothing like what we're about to do right now. We're gonna spin the wheel, we don't know the topics, and we're gonna talk about them off the top of our head. Here we go, let's spin, the, look at that, wow. <laughs> First one, AFC MVP. Uh, Tony Andrew Luck is out. A lot of people have Pat Mahomes and Baker Mayfield. Who is at the top of your list? Well, I'd have to stick with Mahomes, the, the defending MVP, coming off 50 touchdown passes. Uh, they may be even better offensively because they've added some young guys with even more speed than they have, and they still have Tyreek Hill. Uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, Baker Mayfield, if, if all goes according to plan, they're going to score a lot of points. How about that guy? How about A.B.? Well, I don't know. After viewing a few editions of Hard Knocks, <laughs> I, I think they're going to be a little disappointed in that guy. But I, I like the chances of a quarterback, either Mahomes or Baker Mayfield. Uh, Baker Mayfield is in the conversation, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Be, yeah. All right, spin it away. Let's go. What do we got next? It is, ooh, who is winning our division, Anthony? Well, uh, we know there are two big games against Pittsburgh in the span of about 17 days in the middle of the season. I think that's going to determine who wins the division. So the question is, what if they split? And if they do split, I'd uh, side with the Browns. I, th I think this is their year. They're I, the favorite stone in Vegas. They, they should, for a reason. For a reason. I mean, they got more star players now than Pittsburgh, at least on offense. It's just a matter of them living up to all that. Uh, Tony, our division is so tough, though. Isn't it awful? Because you have three really good teams this year, and they just beat each other up all year long, whereas the Patriots have the Jets and the right. Dolphins and the Bills, and it's, it's a cakewalk. Right, and we haven't even mentioned the defending champion, Baltimore Ravens. I mean, they think they're better. So it's going to be, it's going to be tough, but uh, I, th I think the Browns have a lot of momentum going into this season. Next! Here we go. Oh, I feel like we're at a slot <laughs> right now. Number of OBJ touchdowns. Tony, uh, you just mentioned Odell Beckham in the red zone is magic. It's candy. Yeah. He's uncoverable. He should be Baker's go-to guy. I mean, are we looking at 8, 10, 12 touchdowns? What do you expect from OBJ? <sighs> well, uh, start with Baker. What can we project touchdown passes from him? He had 27 last year, and we know he didn't even start every game. He didn't start till the uh, fourth game of the year. So I, I'm thinking 40 touchdowns might be the max for Baker. Uh, OJ, o, OBJ's got to get at least a fourth of those. I, they, I think he'll be in double digits. 10, uh, 10, 10 to 12. 11, 12 touchdowns. Do you think he will lead the Browns in touchdowns? Uh, I would think so. Yeah. yeah I, think the, I think the rest of them will be spread out among about five or six different players. Yeah. But I think the leader of the team will have over 10, and I think it will be him. Spin that wheel. Oh, I mean, here we go. <laughs> Coach of the year. All right. I'm asking Freddie an awful lot to be coach of the year, <laughs> though. Right? I know. This, we are a Browns-oriented show, so <laughs> the, they're part of the answer of all these questions. Really, I mean, if they do what we're all talking about, if they go, let's say, 11-5, and five, win the division, have one of the top five offenses, right. have one of the top ten defenses, right. and, and get in the playoffs for the first time in, what? Uh, 20 years. 20 years for this town. He'll receive coach of the year votes. Sure. Now, I don't know what... The other 31 coaches are going to do, but if all that happens, Freddie will be in that conversation. We have the usual suspects, though Tomlin, Andy Reid, and they'll all be there, and uh, 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 Anthony Lynn and the Chargers and all that. They'll all be in the conversation, sure. though, sure. too, right? And, and you haven't even mentioned Belichick. Who? He, he's never in the conversation because now everyone expects them, right, to be in it. Keep just roll it, just roll it. Tell them they're selling. I knew this was coming. Bud Light selling victory fridges, Tony. Did you know that? Victory fridges are for sale. Tony, $200 to $600. You can now own your own victory fridge. Will you have one at the grossy house? <laughs> I don't think so. What? I don't think so. Were they giving them away last year? Yeah, but this year they're selling them. Tony, you know Browns fans are going to yeah, buy these. I know my friends are going to buy them, right? Yeah, well, they're symbolic of that first win by Baker in relief. The Jets game that ended 19 game winless streak. Right. They're kind of symbolic of the turnaround. Mm. So I, I can see I, the, I see, the value I see what you're saying. There you go. Yeah. And this is what did it. It was a Thursday night on national TV with Baker. All right, one more. Let's go. One more roll, baby. What do we got? Baker's stash. <laughs> Tony, he's, he, he, is the stash gone? It's gone. Yeah. I did, I did, for the game, he didn't have the stash. Easy come, easy go. He just right? had a little, you know, he had a little stubble going yeah. on. 
Yeah. Have you ever grown a mustache, Tony I, Grossi? I could do it I in saw, 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> We're Italian. Tony, Tony, let me say this. I saw a picture of you at Ohio University with a mustache, I believe. Did I not? I've had it all. When you worked I've for uh, the, the paper. The, the OU Post. I've yep. had a mustache. I've had the full beard. Uh, you know, back then it was dark hair. Now it's like great. It's, it's all great. Tell them, but if the Browns go to the Super Bowl, I'm going to make you. <laughs> Grow the mustache. <laughs> Coming up, we're headed to an unbelievable buffet where you certainly will not leave hungry. Stay with us. Welcome back. New set, same old Rizzo show. Uh, Tony, have you been out to the MGM Northfield Park? It is absolutely beautiful. Well, it's got everything you could ask for, including some great places to eat. And if you're looking for variety, check this out. Folks, look where we are. MGM Northfield, back with Chef Chris. Chef, this is what I call buffet on steroids. It's the buffet, like the Ohio it's State the University, buffet. right? Yes, okay. the buffet. Let's take me down the line here and explain. You guys went above and beyond with all this stuff. Yeah, we've got so many different items, almost 70 items to choose from, right? So we've got some great vegetables here. Here's some rotisserie chicken. Mm -hmm. Italian uh, sausage. Beautiful carving station. I know this changes is. every day. Right. Sometimes Hungarian can, sausage, sometimes Italian sausage. Can you just cut me just a, one little piece of that right there? Just right now. Oh, that's perfect. A little Thank taster you. piece. There I'm you go. sorry. And I'm Italian and you know how you know. You know how we are. Oh, hold on. Here you go. Thank you. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so today we're having a nice flank steak, beautiful yeah. smoked flank steak. Mm. And then you know, as we go, it the menu changes from lunch to dinner. We've got all sorts of different offerings from seafood to steak. So a lot of this is our southern style. We got hush puppies, uh, Brussels sprouts, fried chicken, country fried steak, beer battered cod, which oh. is delicious, chicken tenders. So uh, a ton of things we haven't even gone through halfway yet. You got soups, you've got salads, salads. Uh, you've got desserts. Everybody hits the dessert station here. And this ranks right up there with the uh, with the buffets in Las Vegas. Absolutely, doesn't? absolutely. We like to think so. We have a hardworking team here. Um, honestly, it's one of the most popular buffets in the city. We yeah. do that many covers here. Um, yeah. I could tell that right now because we could barely do this, folks, because there's so many people in line like this fine gentleman right here. What else do we have over here, Chris? So here we've got uh, our little Italian station. We do pasta cooked to order. If you want something else different on the uh, Oh, wow, cooked to order. Absolutely. You've got pasta, you got meatballs, meatballs you got pizza. Sausage, you got pizza sausage. coming right out of the oven, right. So everything we do, smaller portions, Less food, more often, right? There's right. no big vat of food that right. we're pulling almost from. Almost like a small plate thing. You you said you have almost 70 items. I want to taste a lot That's of stuff. That's what a buffet should be. Right, right. I'm not right. going to taste exactly right. When I come here, I want to taste a lot of stuff. We got tacos as well. Oh, yeah. Tacos. We this do. goes on forever. Fajitas. You absolutely. got a little bit of everything. So absolutely. there's nothing, if you come here, somebody is going to love at least three or four things. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we also handle any dietary restriction, right? We have some people that are intolerant to gluten, some sure. people are vegetarian, whatever. If we don't have it here and we have it available, they can, these guys can make it for you. They're very, very talented and willing to do so. Very impressed. Chef Chris, thanks again for the tour, buddy. I'm gonna Thank go you. get Good a tray. How about that? Um, I thought the buffet was over like three different times. There were so many things. That thing is absolutely extraordinary. Speaking of MGM Northfield Park, don't, they don't have a sports book yet. <laughs> Legislation could be underway soon down in Columbus. But if they did, hmm, who would you have going to the Super Bowl? Would you bet on one of these five teams to win it all? First of all, of course you got to include the Patriots, right? They can For win sure. it every year. Chiefs, can the Chiefs defense play well enough to win a Super Bowl? Well, they were within, a, what, an offsides penalty of, of getting into the Super Bowl last year. So I'd say, yeah. They're Saints? So did they get jobbed last year, too. Yeah, they should have revenge on their mind all year. Eagles? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. One of the best rosters in the league. And then Tony. <laughs> oh, well, come on. Don't, I, it would have to all break right for us. Absolutely, I get that. Yeah. But stuff like that happens. It's happened to a lot of teams. Yeah. And I mean, this is 20 years in the works. It's not like they're uh, overnight. Right? right. I mean, it's, it's been 20 years in the works and they finally got the team. Browns in the, the Super Bowl. Hardest ticket of all time. It would be the toughest ticket for any Super Bowl ever. One more segment when we come back. Stay tuned. There it is, Tone. We've had the countdown clock going for months, and it's finally here. Game week, baby. Game week. 
Tell them before we go, will the Browns win a home opener this year? Yes or no? Absolutely, yes. Yes? I agree. I think they're going to beat the Titans. And then how many wins? I'm sticking what I thought at the end of last year. 11. It's a lot of wins. I should give them a big hug right now. 11 wins, baby. <laughs> enjoy it, folks. Enjoy your holiday weekend. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. Good to be alive.